Today I'm going to talk about how generally, so this is a generalization, the twin flame chaser has a low self-esteem. One of the main reasons why the twin flame chaser stays in a, any type of relationship that is abusive, and that is going to be true about codependence and empaths and the anxious preoccupied attachment type as well, because they have generally a very, very low self-esteem, which means that they don't believe that they can get any better uh, relationship than the one they currently have. And if you really think about it, is that if somebody would offer you uh, $10,000 and then they would offer you $100,000, you would get the $100,000 because it's a better deal. So this is basically the core of this, that you only see this one person as the best option you can get. Because if you were certain, and this is certainty, that you would get a much better person, a much better partner, it would be a lot easier for you to move on. It would be still difficult because of the emotional connection, but it would be easier. And this is exactly what your opposite, the twin flame runner has, a high self-esteem, and that's why they move away so easily. And in reality, this duality, the low self-esteem as the chaser and the higher self-esteem or high self-esteem as the runner represents two things. The first one is going to be the child self and the parent or adult self, where it actually comes um, as a natural, I would say, pre-coded within us that the child must have a low self-esteem compared to the parent so this parent-child bond can exist because if the child would have the high self-esteem and the parent would have the low self-esteem that would be a huge problem so it has to be this way and the other one is that generally guys have a higher self-esteem than girls and it actually comes from tradition and you have to really think about the society you have grown up in um, to understand the degree of this difference because in many traditional societies uh, it's enough just to be born as a guy and you are on the top of the uh, the pyramid and if you are a girl you are kind of worthless and you are only good to be an oppressed person who washes and cleans i'm not saying it's everywhere but that's in many places still the general idea that a guy is worth a lot more than a girl and this is a conception of society and when we get into more democratic and more western societies this difference is going to be a lot uh, smaller and we have to point it out though that there was a study uh, that in general it's again general that when there is a job application so this is why actually guys have better jobs than females because generally when there is a job description that okay we want to get uh, a person for this job and there are 10 requirements if a guy only satisfy six out of the ten they are going to apply they believe they are good enough but a girl even when they have 10 out of 10 they still don't feel good enough they still question themselves so this is a huge problem why we have these self-belief uh, issues and it comes from we cannot um, uh, discredit society how much pressure we have in general on a female and we can really think as well that if you open up a magazine um, females are generally required to have uh, perfect hair, uh, generally look quite well, compared to a guy who is like, even if he has no hair, he's full of wrinkles, has huge beard belly, he is still fine. But if it was with a female, the female would get shamed a lot easier. So we cannot discredit how much uh, pressure generally females have from society. 
And an additional part, and this is going to be the last part, is that how much even movies going to uh, affect you and have the impact on you. And generally you see this uh, very common duality. Now it's not as often, but in older movies, it's very, very common that you have a relatively old guy with a very, very young, attractive female partner in the movie. And these are, so it's not said directly, but indirectly, subconsciously, you keep seeing these images over and over and over that uh, there is an old, not so good looking guy with a very, very attractive female over and over and over and over. And this creates these patterns, these self beliefs that this is how reality is. And this is what I um, have to compare myself. And the only way to overcome that is that you realize that this is unhealthy and unrealistic. And the guys, or even if you are a guy, it doesn't really matter, but an, only an unhealthy person will want uh, this pattern to be reinforced. And there are many, many people who are starting to become self-aware and they are leaving these old beliefs behind. And if you reinforce, and this is where your self-worth is coming up, and this is where your um, self-esteem is coming in, that you create boundaries, and boundaries are expectations, that you expect certain things to happen in life, and you don't allow others to, to actually try to drag you down drag you back into their self-beliefs and the way to do that is that you see the world realistically you see yourself realistically and you see your partner or the partner you are going to have realistically as well um, by learning about how emotionally mature people look like and learning about how emotionally mature relationships look like and this is going to be your biggest help in life see you in my next video